Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after having just made our cemetery and expanded our apiary and added these wonderful paths. And if you saw the last episode, and you better have, then you may notice that I have made a couple changes. I've sort of added this little, I don't know, tree planter thing with flowers. I wanted to break up sort of the monotony of just having this sort of intersection here, so I figured a roundabout. No one in my country knows how to use them, so here's me using one the wrong way. And then I also did branch off over here to the charcoal pit, and over here toward our farms and the barn, and this is where I kind of ran out of path. But I really enjoyed making the cemetery and the mausoleum in our last episode, and at some point I will connect these up. It won't happen today, but it will, soon. Don't worry. Today we are shifting our focus to something a little bit different, in that we are going to go abroad. But we're not going to New Horizons, we're going to a few places we've already been a few times. In some cases, several times. And that's because that's where traders live. Vintage Story has nine kinds of traders, and I have them designated here in these different chests in these perfect columns that worked out precisely for this episode. There are three that we don't have access to yet. We haven't found them. There is the agricultural trader. They sell things like seeds and fruit and food, and they buy things like farming tools and some of the rarer crops, among other odds and ends. The luxuries trader sells things like colored glass, very expensive clothing, and a few nice pieces of armor and a sword. And they buy things like gems, even more expensive clothing, and a couple other things too. The survival goods trader trades in sort of a bunch of different things. They sell weapons, tools, arrows, and they buy a few odds and ends, things like bread, basic survival things. Each of these three also buys additional clothing. The agricultural trader likes to buy things that are related to farms. The survival goods trader likes to buy things that are oddly related to blacksmithing. I don't quite get it. So we don't have any of these three yet in the world, and at some point we will. And when we do, we will discuss these more in depth, because some of these, actually all three of these, are kind of nice to have. We're going to skip over this metal column and go to the one on the right. These are the traders that I find I typically only buy from. I don't really sell things to them. Because most of them buy tools made of tin bronze, bismuth bronze, or black bronze. And I don't find their prices very compelling, typically. When I'm looking to sell items, I'm looking for things that are either easily renewable or to have a relatively high return on investment. And the process of getting materials to make tools, the making of the tools, and then only getting four to six or so gears from it just doesn't appeal to me. Now for some of these, their value does increase somewhat if you have other traders, and I'm thinking things like the furniture trader likes to buy glass, and they will buy glass at a higher price than the luxury trader sells it. So you can actually buy glass from this guy, sell it to this guy, and make a tidy profit. However, in general, I typically find myself spending gears here because they have things that I want. Building Materials sells things like rare brick colors and plaster, but you know, we're already the master of that. The commodities trader sells things that are really essential. In fact, we've gotten all of our alum from the commodities trader, and I just recently got my hands on some salt. So we will be getting into that soon, but not today. And the furniture trader sometimes sells things like iron doors, which I usually find to be a better deal than making them myself, because they're a pain to make. It requires six iron plates. No, thank you. Now, these guys, the artisan, the clothing and the treasure hunter traders. These are the most interesting to me, and these are the ones that we're focusing on today because we are poor. We only have 30 years to our name. We used to have something like 90 or so, and I don't know where they all went. I really, I don't, I don't know where they all went. I have no idea where they went, none. And so I want to rebuild our stash of gears, but I'm also looking to buy a few things too. So I want to find some things to sell these guys, and I know just what they want. The artisans often like to buy rough peridots, 
rough diamonds, and rough emeralds. Now we only have low potential gems, but they do come in low, medium, and high, and they'll often buy the higher grade gems for a little bit more money. Clothing traders are nice because most of the things that they buy that are worth selling to them are relatively easily renewable. They will buy leather, they'll buy sewing kits, and flax twine. And they'll buy some other odds and ends, including clothing, but these are the three things that I like to sell to them. Now, treasure hunter traders, these guys can be a gold mine because we have something else in addition to these that we'll sell them. But they will buy linen sacks sometimes for a one gear each. They can buy leather backpacks for a tidy sum, and they're probably their best bet for selling candles, although it's still not a great price, but I figured we could sell two. It wouldn't hurt too much. I left the rest of their goods over here because they're perishable. Treasure hunter traders like things like cooked red meat, as well as bread of all different kinds. Now, we only have these three, flax, spelt, and rye. They will also buy rice bread. However, they will not buy any of the breads that were introduced in 1.15, such as the amaranth bread or the cassava bread, anything that grows strictly in the south. So, today is going to be all about how to bilk traders out of their hard-earned gears. And I am here for it. So, let's get to it. Our first stop today is up at the Artisan Trader for a couple reasons. One, they're the closest. Two, they're sort of the start of a nice little loop to hit a couple different traders. And three, I can check on our fruit trees, which fruit trees have been fixed, mostly. And so we will be hitting these in an episode soon, but not today. So we have 12 days before we can harvest these guys. So we'll come back in 12 days and do that. So let's stop here at our good friend, the Artisan Trader. And it's a good idea to always bring your gears with you when you go visiting traders because you don't want to have to hike the whole way back in case you discover they have something you want. So what have you got for us, buddy? So he actually has a pretty good variety of things to buy from us. Now, I don't like selling things like fire clay, blue clay, or peat, or charcoal because while they're... If not renewable, they're easy to get. They just don't offer much for them. And you end up burning through shovels getting all of this stuff. And charcoal, don't get me started on charcoal. But, oh, they have some good emerald prices. So let's sell them an emerald. He'll buy a medium diamond for nine and a low for seven. It's actually not terrible. And are you low? Nope, you're medium. So we can sell an emerald and a diamond, and that's it. That gets us 19 more gears. Excellent. Now, you'll see here, down at the bottom, how much money both parties have in the transaction. It'll show your total, and it'll show their total. Now, traders actually have a bit of an economy behind them, and so when you spend gears at them, they gain gears they then spend on things that you sell them. And it is possible to run a trader out of gears and not be able to sell them anything, just like you might run out of gears yourself. So you want to keep an eye on... Yes, thank you. So you want to keep an eye on how many gears they have to offer because you might need to come back and buy something from them before they're really able to purchase anything from you. Up here at the top where it says delivery of new goods in two days, this means that their trades will get somewhat refreshed after that time has passed. And that can do a number of things. Some of these trades may cycle out and no longer be available. Some of these, like these two, might be refreshed and they might actually become available again. And when trades are cycled out, you may also get new trades as well. The traders may also get a few gears. I don't think it's a ton and it doesn't have like a reset that I know of, which is why he's kind of poor right now. I think he started out at like, I don't know, 40 or 50 gears when we first met him. But this does slowly refill over time, as far as I'm aware. Thank you, Adachi. Always nice doing business. Let's get going up to the second stop I want to make, and I'll meet you all there. Our second stop on this trip is at the Treasure Hunter Trader. And these are the ones who can be cash cows sometimes. Hello, Roy, Roa. What have you got for us today? So it looks like he has kind of the same trades. Oh, hey, he'll buy a rough peridot for not many gears. 
But it seems like he has the same trades that I saw last time, such as the Blackguard's Curious at the helm. Which is a shame. I was hoping to pick up the leggings here. However, it looks like he will buy, ooh, all three of our bread types. Now you'll see here that he wants five spelt, four flax, four rye, and four rice bread. Because there is some variability in both the quantity of items that they want, as well as the price. For instance, this bismuth bronze long blade is actually the lowest price that they can offer. They'll offer between four and six gears for it. I think he rolled kind of low on most of these things that he's offering to buy. The longbows can go for up to ten gears. The backpack, however, this is, I think, the highest they will offer for the backpack. So we're going to sell him that. Thank you so much. And he'll buy a linen sack. Now he'll actually buy two, but we only brought one, and honestly, one gear for an entire piece of linen and twine is kind of low, but I wanted to make the exchange anyway. And we're going to sell him as much of the bread as we can, and looks like we'll be able to get a handy sum of gears out of this transaction. So let's go ahead and just gonna give him all of these. And there we go. And he wants eight more spelt bread. There we go. Now he will have new goods in six days, so at that time we could come back and see if he will rebuy any of these things, or if he will have any refreshed trades. But I think for now our business with him is concluded. He's not buying the cooked red meat either, which is a shame, because I kind of wanted to sell him that. But we will just have to eat it on the way here and keep it from spoiling. The same is true for the bread. We'll just eat that, and our green is already at zero because we died a couple times, and I haven't been eating bread a whole lot. Well, Leroy, it was nice doing business with you. I, I am sure you'll see you later. Now, our next target is a familiar face. Because we've already made so many gears, and we have 68 of them, I wanted to see if our commodities trader, whatever his name is, Stretch, had anything worth buying at a decent price. He has some more alum, but that's really expensive. I mean, that's one gear for one. I am not impressed, buddy. Not impressed. So we're going to move on from him because he doesn't have anything we want, and he won't buy anything we have. And I'm not interested in trading him an owl chest, because those are rare, and we only have one. Our next stop is at the first of two clothiers we have found. Let's go see what he is offering to buy from us. I don't think there's much that we want to buy from him, but who knows? Hello, Kino. What have you got for us? You have some armor, and you have some clothes but I am not interested in those, and you don't want to buy anything that I have. And that's kind of a bad price for linen, so... Nope, skip. Okay, next stop. Okay, our next stop is at a furniture trailer that we found a few episodes ago. And we've only been here once, but this is one of the ones where we might be likely to spend money rather than acquire it. And what have you got for us today? Not a whole lot. Oh, you do have an iron door, though. Oh, I might buy you. I just might buy you. He also has some paintings for not terrible prices, but I'm not quite ready to decorate with paintings yet. You know what? I'm going to buy this door, because holy cow, I hate making those. Okay, well, we have now spent some money. It's time to hopefully go acquire some. There is a clothier just down here, and there's an artisan right over here. So we're going to hit them in that order and see what we find. Well, this is certainly a journey to get here, but we are at the clothier. Hello, friend. Hello, Ezel. Okay, here we go. So he will buy leather from us and flax twine. Now, this isn't the greatest deal on twine, but it's better than the linen, because this is effectively eight flax twine for one gear, and this is six for one gear. So, tell you what, we'll sell him as many of each as he is willing to buy. No? Okay. Why don't you just buy as many as you want and leave the rest? There we go. Okay. We got a few more gears that way. 
Thank you, Easel. And I don't think we want anything else from you. Okay. Off to the Artisan. Okay, we are closing in on the Artisan over there. Hey, buddy. What is your name? You're Eric. That's a very normal name for being in this game. Whatever. Okay, so he wants a nice Peridot. We don't have that. He wants beeswax at an exorbitant price. He wants a high... Ooh, I'll take a low diamond. Sweet. Pretty often for that. Six gears. That's, that's kind of low, but whatever. But 12 gears for an emerald? That's not too shabby. I will take it. Thank you, sir. Well, I think that is the end of the traders who will buy from us. There are a couple more I'd like to hit on the way home. I want to go visit these building materials traders that we met on our long journey out in the middle of nowhere and see if they have anything interesting for us to build with. I would be interested in maybe some plaster because I want to use some of that soon and it's a real pain to make and it's really cheap to buy if they have it. So, oh right, these mountains. Oh boy. Well, let's get going toward those building material traders and see what they have and see if they can entice any of our gears from us. And this is why we go adventuring in places we've been before, because we will miss all manner of good things like pink apple trees and terra preta. So, yeah. Bonus. And we're pretty close to that building trader. And that deposit yielded over a stack of terra preta. That is beautiful. And here we are. Let's see what you have in store for us. Ah, up door. Smart guy. Hello, old eyes. My name is, um, new eyes. Sure. So as you can see, I'm not a huge fan of the building material traders for selling things because they will buy tools at kind of meh prices for the effort that goes into getting the materials for them. And same for the lanterns. The lanterns look like a better deal, but you're putting two ingots into each lantern instead of just one for the tools, so it kind of is a wash. This deal might be okay at eight gears, but it's not worth banking on, I don't think. But he does have a couple things that are neat. He does sell red clay bricks, red clay shingles, brown clay bricks, and brown clay shingles. I just wish they weren't two gears for a tiny number of them. And no plaster, of course. He does sell wallpaper for five gears each. Wow. We're going to skip most of that. Oh, the red clay is really enticing, though. You know, we have 75 gears. Let's just do it. Let's take a couple of these. I'm thinking the bricks rather than the shingles. Do I want any red roofed buildings is the question. As well as how many roofs can 45 shingles cover? Not many. Let's do the bricks. I'm, I'm thinking of some interesting creative ways we can use these without needing a lot of them. So let's just grab, I don't know, a bunch. Sure. Sure, sure. Alright, see you, pal. And we're going to go visit the second materials trader and see if he has anything good for us, like some plaster. And after a long romp through a thick forest full of rifts, we are finally at our final destination. Not that kind. We are here, and we're going to see you have goodies for us. Oh, you do. Oh, boy. Well, that's a dilemma because my inventory is chock full. Let's chow down on some of these. Mmm, nummy, nummy. Hey, don't, don't, don't push me at your door. I'm, I'm still... Oh, you don't want me eating in your cart. I, I understand. I'm a messy eater. What do I want to ditch? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. Let's see what I have in here. Oh, I have plenty of room. I'm being silly. I'm back. Okay, so you have... Ooh, ancient pillars. Neat. Expensive, but neat. You have more brown clay bricks, but I don't need those. 
Yep, today I am just here for your plaster, buddy. I will absolutely take that. Thank you. And he is out of plaster. I am a happy customer. And here we go. So he'll buy quicklime for one gear, but holy cow, I mean, that that is such a raw deal because you have to spend so much time and so much lime and so much fuel to get this. That one gear is just ouch. No, thank you. Well, given that it is a medium rift tonight, I think I might just take a nap in his bed because you won't mind, right? Will you? No? You don't mind? Okay, just, just don't stare at me with your weird goat eyes while I'm sleeping, okay? I'm gonna hold you to that. Nice bracelet. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are back. It is apparently still a medium rift activity day. We're gonna have some bread. Finally starting on this. And that actually gave us some decent grain. Okay, good. And we're going to head back home and check out our spoils. A seashell. Dare I take it? Absolutely. Okay, going home now, I swear. I mean it this time. You know, in this game, there is nothing quite so comforting as having your house come back into view. I know we're pretty well protected. We're pretty strong here. We have tier 2 armor, so anything on the surface isn't really a threat to us. Even wolves are a nuisance more than anything. But for some reason, I just... I feel so much lighter when I get home and get inside, close the door, and I know that nothing's going to come in and bother me in my house. But we're back. I'm going to go and unload things into a chest and we'll take stock of our trades. Alright, so here is what we traded in total, not just two from the Treasure Hunter Trader. And in here I also have the items that we didn't get to trade. Now we started the day out with 30 gears, and we are up 14 gears. Not too shabby. Now we did trade away a lot of things. We traded away a couple emeralds, a diamond. I don't think anyone bought a peridot. Maybe the first one bought a peridot. I forget. We traded away some leather, some twine, a whole bunch of bread. And I think that's about it as far as things that we traded. Now in return, we got an iron door. Now this is worth 12 iron ingots and a lot of time frankly. And so I'm pretty happy with this being 20 gears, and I think it's on the low end of the potential cost for that. We also got two and a half more stacks of plaster, which is great because I want to work with some plaster again soon. And we got half a stack each of red and brown clay. Now in addition, while we were out, I picked up a few more of the white and orange lupins. We got over a stack of terra preta, and one seashell. I just saw it had to have it. So, as you can see, trading can be quite lucrative. In the span of about a day and a half in-game, we made 14 gears and we got a whole lot of other stuff that we're going to need and want in the upcoming episodes. Anyway, I'm going to go put the stuff away and prepare for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed our little romp around the countryside, visiting old friends and ones that maybe you didn't know we had. Anyway. As always, my name has been Korazar, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.